Hi, everybody. This is Michael from Halloween, and you are watching Sonic Perspective. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of Sonic Perspectives. I'm Rodrigo, and my guest today is one of my favorite vocalists of all time, Mr. Michael Kiska of Halloween. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. And thanks yeah. for having me, as they always say on the American TV shows. Thanks for having me. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, well, as we're talking today, Halloween is getting ready for a North American tour. Uh, the first one you're doing in such a long while. How yeah. are the tour preparations going at the moment? I don't even think we have started yet, but it's okay. like, the, the thing is, I mean, for me, it's not difficult. I, mm -hmm. I know the songs, you know, and, and the same for Annie. It's more a thing of getting the, the diaphragm in, mm -hmm. in, in shape a little. Never had to do that when I was younger, but nowadays I have to practice a little to get the, the power, you know, from the, from the diaphragm. The band is a different story. If, I mean, there's a very complicated sort of music, so they have to learn a lot of stuff. And uh, it's not, it sounds easy but it's not easy to play it's very busy music you know with a lot of things happening underneath the vocals and not only the solos but also like everything underneath and yeah. i mean they write this stuff you know and yeah. their own fault but uh, yeah. they gotta practice they gotta practice a lot so and actually we, we do play a little tour um in south america with kiss before oh, we yeah. go to north america so yeah. i'm basically just practicing that set yet and when it gets closer to that we're leaving, I will do the, the headline set a little, you know. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think they do start practicing pretty soon in, in, in Cosmo. Mm -hmm. And uh, with three guitar players in the band now, uh, what kind of adaptation did they have to do to sort of accommodate these three uh, instruments now? You, you mean uh, the three guitars? Yeah. It's not difficult. Because there's there are so many guitars in in that music anyway. It's the same yeah. with Maiden. You know, and I made when they were they're not they're really good off with a third guitar player because someone yeah. you can do a rhythm guitar and you can still have the two harmony two lead guitars play harmony and even on on the Maiden records and the same with us you have something mm -hmm. three harmony guitars and you can do that all. You used to actually you used to shrink it down for life. You used to simplify it a little bit for life. And now you don't have to do that as much. I mean, three guitarists are not so bad for this type of music. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And uh, I mean, along with the with you guys on this tour uh, in North America are the fellow Germans of Hammerfall. Uh, I know that Germans are all about precision, but can we expect them to join you guys on stage at some point or vice versa? Or We haven't done anything like that. Um... <laughs> I don't know why, really. It's just a funny idea. I, I know that they like the band. Yeah, you know, they. I wouldn't mind, uh, but that wasn't really happening. I mean, we get along really, really good. I mean, we're mm -hmm. just we're just pals, you know. And uh, the whole tour went down well. They they were happy. We were happy. It just is all just good. But somehow there was no uh, uh, collaboration. What is it? Co collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Cooperation. <laughs> Cooperation. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. And, uh, well, I do a lot of interviews, and what I hear a lot is that booking a tour nowadays after COVID is a lot more challenging. Uh, all the insurances yeah. and precautions that need to be in place, right? You don't uh, even get insurance anymore. <laughs> That's the thing. They don't insure you anymore. I mean, I'm probably going to be fine now. It was like that last year, you know, when, mm -hmm. when it really started. But, but COVID doesn't really play a role anymore in Europe. I don't know how it is in America. It doesn't play a role in South America. And it doesn't play any role here anymore. But it's like the costs have exploded. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a, that's a problem for for many bands who play on a certain level. We are yeah. most of the time fine. 
you know, most of the time it's okay because we're selling some some serious tickets when we're America is a little smaller, of course. I hope yeah. I hope this works well, so everybody should show up, really. You know, yeah. But like yeah. in in other places, we we play much bigger than than uh, than in North America, so that's fine. We're we're fine. But when you when you I mean, a lot of the bands who are not huge were able to make a living by yeah. touring uh, before the pandemic, and now some of them just can't. So I, I hope this is uh, going to get better. You know, it's like the price, the costs have like tripled. Yeah, you know? I know. And what I noticed as well, or I'm in Toronto, by the way, and I see a lot of bands going to the States, but not making it to, to Canada because yeah. the cost of living here has just exploded and yeah. all the taxes and everything. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do one show, but yeah. we did only one show last, last time too, didn't we? Didn't it was we? In, in Montreal, I believe. Not here. Yeah. Not here in Toronto. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, I mean, it's a calculation thing. They have just canceled one show that we were supposed to do, I think, in Finland or something like that. Mm. They just canceled it because even if we sell out completely, we would lose money because it's just too expensive. It doesn't yeah. make any sense, you know, but it doesn't happen very often. It was actually the only show that I remember that just didn't make any sense to play right now. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably better off doing a festival or something like that, you know. I think so, yeah. And there's yeah. like here in Canada, at least, and I can say in North America, there's a shortage of festivals right now. Uh, yeah. You don't you don't get as many as you get in the summer in Europe, for example. So especially in Canada, you used to have like heavy Montreal, but I don't even know the state of that festival anymore. But yeah, they should they should do festivals because festivals yeah. are always better for bands. Because yeah. you don't have to make, you don't pay for everything. You know, the, the setup is there. And they all use the same setup together, which yeah. saves a lot of money. So it's like festivals are always very good for bands. I love it anyway. I, yeah. I like this this challenge, you know, to, to play with, with other bands and meeting other people and stuff like that. So yeah. we, we're going to do a lot of festivals uh, uh, this year. After North America is basically all we do. It's like yeah. almost every weekend we and and actually pretty much all of them we do headline, which is which is nice, you know. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, well, the self-titled album Halloween came out in June 2021 uh, in a time when touring was still uncertain. And I know the initial plan was for 2020 for it to mm. come out, but yeah, that got postponed as well, right? Yeah, I mean, we the, our momentum had been killed. You know, we had a we had a great momentum. <laughs> it was a yeah. horrible timing for a pandemic. You know. We, we we wanted to just hit the hit the, uh, the the fans with another album and then touring again in even bigger scales. We wanted to have a huge production. We yeah. had all these plans, you know, with a big stage and various monitors and stuff like that. We wanted to extend on the first one, and since the pandemic hit, uh, we we kind of okay. Let's 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 start easy again. Let's see where that goes. Now it kind of fucked it up a little. It, yeah. it didn't kill us, you know, we, because the people still show up and I think we're fine, but uh, it was frustrating, especially the, the, I mean, on the other hand, you know, other bands uh, weren't as lucky as we were because we, we just finished a complete touring circle, you know, and we were, we were working on the album and we finished the album uh, right before the, the, the pandemic started. Can you imagine, you know, yeah. so we were fine also financially. So we, it, it was okay for us. We could, we were able to wait without, without, uh, you know, getting in, but some bands and some musicians really struggled financially. They really had serious existential problems and, and that must suck. I mean, I just, I just, I, I know because of Dennis Ward playing bass for um, Magnum. I know that Magnum started their tour and then had like maybe one or two weeks they were on tour and then they had to stop it. And that's the biggest nightmare because not only do they need the money, you know, to, to make their living, they you pre-invest when you tour. So that those costs are there and then and, and you have to stop the tour. I mean, for them, it must have been horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, with 16 albums to draw from, uh, what is the band's process these days to put together a set list? I'm not aware of all the records that Andy yeah. uh, was doing. I'm, I'm aware of a couple mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and some songs. I'm not aware of the whole catalog, to be honest with you. But yeah. yes, it is challenging. But then again, there, there are these key songs that 
everybody right away agrees on are the most important. You know, songs like I Want Out, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Eagle Fly Free, Dr. Steen, even Future World, A Perfect Gentleman, Forever and One. You know, there, there are a yeah. couple of songs that just became hits. Mm -hmm. And and so they're out of the question, really. But you got so many of them, and yeah. when you and you only play when you when you play three hours like we did on the first tour, and you don't have a, have a special guest with you, so uh, and you don't have a new album, it's much easier because you put three hours, you just play, yeah, you know the the the, the tracks, the best tracks you, you 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 can imagine, and we could make two sets. Actually, uh, uh, three hour sets just with the old material and have have two great sets, you know. Yeah. Now it's, it's it's a little shorter because this is about two hours something uh, because we're coming with uh, with Hammerfall and we have a new record, so it's much more difficult uh, to choose the songs, you know. Um, yeah. It's going to be fine, but since we want to play a few of the something from the new album too, uh, it's not going to be like the first one. It's going to be slightly different. Okay, okay. And you mentioned I Want Out. I do remember vividly when that song came on MTV. I was about 14 at the time, and that kind of Me blew too. my mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, those were great times, the late 80s. And yeah, but what, what can you remember so all the time? Yeah. I, I'm really yeah. happy that I was young in those years. Uh, you know, it's great to be to be young anyway, but we had a bloom in music culture. They can't imagine. Yeah. 60s, 70s, and the 80s were the best years for, for, for any kind of music. You had a fantastic record industry. You could still make a living just by selling records, you know. Now everybody has to tour because you just, people don't valuate music anymore, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a bit sad. I mean, the culture really died out, you know. I'm fine because I'm a dinosaur. You know, we can we can live by out of the legacy but it's it's really hard for for bands that trying to to start a career you know yeah it's, it's, you can still you can still i'm sure there's still ways somehow you know youtube maybe you, you can you can you can spread your stuff through youtube those this stuff wasn't there in those days yeah but when it comes to the music culture it was fantastic and and, and i'm glad that i was younger because i was eating i was eating all this music you know, I was I was fat with all this music, and I was <laughs> never I never limited myself to metal. I mean, mm -hmm. I started with Elvis, and then and then the Beatles. Uh, Elvis never left me, um, mm -hmm. and then I, when I was I think about thirteen or something, I got into metal. A friend I still have played like Number of the Beast, Screaming for Vengeance, and then I was into into that music too, and I was. But at the same time, when I was the biggest metal fan, and I had like Eddie posters all all around in the in the in the room that I had at my mother's house, I was still listening to U two as well, you mm -hmm. know, or even Eurythmics or Kate Bush. I was I always had a very wide uh, taste of music. I was listening to the Police, uh, even Simon and Garfunkel. I loved them, you know, and I, and I was playing on acoustic guitar Beatles songs and Simon and Garfunkel songs, and I had a metal band, you know. I mean, my main thing for in, in those years when I got into 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 this type of music was, of course, metal. I mean, I was I was mainly an Iron Maiden fan. Uh, that was the thing, and, and Judas Priest and Queensrÿche and anything with Ronnie James Dio. First three Metallica records, uh, I really meditated them. Um, but I was always open to other stuff too. And nowadays, I I hardly listen to anything heavy. Nowadays, I sometimes, yeah, yeah sometimes I put an old priest record in or something and, and yeah you know the, yeah. The, especially the older ones like killing machine or, or uh, a screaming for vengeance or defenders of the faith fantastic record yeah. i mean mm -hmm. they're, they're still fun you know that I, I i still put it but mainly i listen to classical music these days just classical music my i mean all those i mean i have discovered a whole bunch that i didn't even know before i mean everybody knows bach everybody knows beethoven you know of course yeah. they're, they're the best but there are a whole bunch of others that are very interesting, you know, like Weinberg mm -hmm. or um, I, I, I discovered a whole bunch of Mendelssohn um, um, and I have particular taste, I, you know, it's stuff that I like string quartets a lot. And, and mm -hmm. we call it kama music. I don't know if, if that's an English expression. It's like a smaller orchestra, mm -hmm. it's something you can play in a smaller room. Um, sometimes chamber, chamber, chamber music. Yeah, chamber, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Chamber music, yeah, I'm really yeah. into that. Or stuff like the old viola da gamba, for instance, mm -hmm. or Irish music. 
like Irish classical music and listen to that. It's me, like I would say, like ninety-eight percent uh, of the time I'm listening to classical music. Mm -hmm. uh, and well, you you explore a different side of of your singing when you left uh, Halloween the first time. Uh, you did the Super Red Project and you did a few solo albums as well, right? And the Place Vendôme as well. Yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah. Let me turn on the light here. It gets dark. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, oh, the battery is off. Doesn't matter. Still a bit of light. That's okay. We it could ran still out. see you. I probably forgot to turn it off yesterday. Uh, what okay. was the question? Uh, no, uh, we're Plas just a, Dome. Yeah, Plas Vendome and your solo album, Instant Clarity, which I love as well. Yeah, I had a bit of help with that one. Yeah. Adrian Smith. And, and, and I. Yeah, well, that's what you do when you're no longer part of a band. You know, you, mm -hmm. you just you just see what comes in. I, I was I learned a lot during that mm -hmm. time. I don't want to miss it. It was a, it was a very important time, but it's much much more fun in the band. Yeah, you know, when everything is on your own shoulder, you know, if you don't get up and do things, nothing happens. You know, if I don't get up and do things, a lot happens still because there's yeah. six other people, you know, working on the album. Yeah, and uh, one thing I remember of that time is when Bruce left Iron Maiden. There was a lot of speculation that you could audition for the band or you could yeah. re replace him. Was there any truth to that at any point or? I mean, I never auditioned or we never talked about it. I, the mm -hmm. funny thing is that, that I even heard it on TV. We yeah. had, <laughs> had, I was watching a TV show with Hot and Heavy or something with this gorgeous girl with the long hair. Uh -huh. What was her name? Steinberger? Steinberger or something. A very good looking uh, lady. Um, right. She was, she was the host of, of that show. And she, even in England, even in English TV shows said, well, everybody knows now, Michael Kiske is the new singer of I Maiden. <laughs> when do we rehearse? Yeah. You know, that, that was funny. And I, I, I always get, when people ask me that question, I always tell the same story. The only mm -hmm. thing that I can say about it is, I once had a, uh, did an interview in France with, mm -hmm. a, with a French interviewer. And he told me that he had an interview with Steve Harris And that Steve Harris said that I was one of the three he, he could imagine. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where it came from. You got to ask him. I, okay. I, I really don't know. <laughs> that's, the only, that's the only thing that, that I heard uh, that might be possible, how, how, how it came up, you know. Got it. Got it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I don't think I would fit Iron Maiden. I love Iron Maiden, but they're so British, you know, and yeah. the fans are so nationalistic. I don't think that they would accept a German singer in Iron Maiden. <laughs> Maybe they could. I don't know. You, you can never say. I don't know. Uh, I would love to hear you maybe, guys. Maybe, maybe I have a stereotype in my head about the British. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. that's maybe that's yeah. Maybe that's wrong. Yeah. But I yeah. I would think it would be prop. Maybe difficult. But who knows? Maybe it would yeah. have worked. Yeah. Well, back to all things Halloween. Uh, I mean, I love the album cover that we see here in the background. Uh, yeah. And I know it was done by Eller and Cantor, who worked with Testament and many other bands. Yeah. Um, it, this one I love. What was the process behind doing this? Did it Did he just come up with it on his own, or? No, we had a, we had a we had an idea. I mean, mm -hmm. we we came up with the with the basic idea. We want some some sort of combination of because that's what it is, you know, combination of some stuff we've done before. You have the keys, you know, you have the yeah. trumpets of Walter Jericho in it, and when you look carefully, there's just a bit of everything. You even have the rings, you know, from Master of the Rings in it and yeah. stuff. Yeah. We wanted a combination of the key records uh, that, that were important for the band. And um, we, we wanted some sort of keeper. Of course, he was offering things. You know, he was he was suggesting things. And the band was was constantly involved. And as soon as the basic idea was clear, he made that cover. And we all loved it right away. Mm -hmm. The only thing we had is that we wanted something below, like like uh, like on the lower part, this clock kind of thing. When he, I, I'm, I'm not even sure if, if I remember correctly, but something we just wanted to have added. But the, the whole thing, we all loved it. We just felt like that's amazing. It, it looks like a, it could have been, it could have been a Led Zeppelin cover, you know, just from mm -hmm. the quality, the quality of the of the, of the image. I, we were all very happy with it. I yeah. mean, the guy did a great job. He's he's awesome, by the way. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. And I mean, changes in the lineup are always risky. And, you yeah. know, we had you and Kyrie joining the band. What was the first meeting like when you, you entered the room and like, what was, you know, the, the newer guys in the band? What were, the, what were their impression of this? 
I mean, there was a long preparation before we really got into a room together. Uh, okay. Uh, by coincidence, I ran into Michael Wyckoff in 2015 or something backstage when I was on tour with Avantasia. I think it was in France again, a festival or something. And he was just very sweet. He was everything about him was about peace, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that was the the the, the beginning of uh, me realizing that I don't have that anger anymore. You know, it, it it vanished. I had to run into him to realize that, and then. Later on, we played with Unisonic in Spain, and and Kai was just uh, it's like a year later maybe Kai, after after a great show with Unisonic in Spain, he was backstage. He was telling me, Michael, one day we got to do something with Halloween again, you know, before it's too late. And I said, you know what, man, I'm open. But that was just a statement. It was not something. It was not that I was like really seriously considering it. Right. It was just you know, I'm open, but. Costa was Costa was play, playing the drums in Unisoni, and Costa is also a tour manager, and he is part of the bottom roll management. Mm -hmm. And he was he was telling this to Jan Bayati, who is the manager of Halloween. So after like maybe a week or two weeks, uh, he called me up and he was asking me how serious I was about the statement. If that's something, if that's something I would seriously consider. I said, yeah, I'm open to it. But of course, we got to talk first. We got to see if we if we get along. So I, the next thing was that I that I had a, a long talk with Michael because that he we had the main, most problems at the mm -hmm. end of phase, you know. And that was completely out of out of the way. We both have changed so much. We almost didn't know what was the problem. You know, we almost mm -hmm. couldn't really remember what was. I mean, he is so not someone who causes any trouble these days he's so not into fighting and ego crap he just wants to smoke a cigarette and have a good time and he just wants <laughs> harmony basically you know uh, and yeah. completely different to how he used to be in the 80s and i have of course changed a lot too so that was no problem at all and then i i flew over to tenerife because i didn't know andy and i needed to check out if we get along because young Jan Bayati said, if you don't get along, we don't even have to start it. It doesn't make sense. So, so I flew yeah. over there and we would we spent about two weeks in Tenerife. He was driving me to the great places where you can eat stuff. We were sitting for hours, you know, watching the sea, talking about everything, spiritual stuff, you know, music stuff. And it was fantastic. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm not just saying this, you know, to to sound good or whatever, or to promote this band or whatever. It was really good. It was it was almost like I knew him. It was almost like we were old friends or something like that. It was really weird. It's one of those karma things. I don't believe in coincidences at all. You know, <laughs> uh, I have experienced so many things in my life uh, that are not coincidences that are so perfect. You know, it just had to happen in that moment. Right. You know, the spiritual world had the hands in it there's no doubt about it you know if you if you are awake and if you live your life with a bit of a with a few candles up here lit you you realize these things you know yeah. um so, but so when that went down so well there was just nothing in the way and that's when we had the first like you asked the first meeting it was 2016 it was the first time we all got together in cards in one room and everybody was a little stiff of course, you know, every, every, I remember yeah. when I, when I shared, I shook on these hands, he was shaking. Mm -hmm. it, it was interesting. And uh, everybody was, you know, we all knew somehow if we do this, this is special, you know, this is, this is something that was certainly going to cause some waves. Um, uh, but everybody was kind of insecure what to think about the others. I mean, I did not know Sasha. I did not know uh, Lübele. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't a problem. We didn't have a negative past. They probably have had their influences, you know, from the stories the other guys say. So they might have some sort of pre uh, um, ideas about uh, who we were or whatever. I mean, they've been in the band for a long time, but that wasn't really a problem. Um, and yeah, it was a little stiff, but we got warm with each other. And as soon as we finished the first two months touring, um, all of that was gone. There was the this insecurity was gone, and when we did the next shows in 2018, I think it was a different band. We were much more, uh, yeah, like like um, firm. We we uh, you, there was no doubt anymore that that we function on a stage. You have had your experiences with all the seven on the stage, and since 
2018, I think, I think we did the best shows, really. I think so, too. And I, I, I'm glad that you guys are treating this with the care that the fans expect. And, you know, this album, the self-titled album, and these tours are what fans have been expecting since at least when Kai Hansen left the band in the first yeah. place, right? Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, at least the ones who enjoyed the the time with me and Kai, you know, I mean, and he mm -hmm. of course was able to uh, to kind of reform the band in a way that they were functioning again. Uh, we were not functioning anymore when when Kai left. So when he got into the band, it was actually I I I always like to say, uh, even though it was hurting me in those days, uh, he kind of saved the band in my opinion because mm -hmm. he was he was what the band had needed. He he's a very he's a lion from the star sign he's a, he's a maker he's yeah. someone who writes songs and um he was exactly what the band needed in those days and that's why they were able to continue for so many years and and i'm pretty sure when we did the first tour with pumpkins united you still have these two parties you know you had the the ones that showed up just because kai and me were in the band and of course the ones that show up that have been to the previous shows as well. And, and, yeah. and they, they love Halloween with Andy Darius. And, but I think we were able to kind of get them together now. I mm -hmm. have the impression when we played here in Europe, it's different. It's more like they now know what to expect, are happy about it. And that's a beautiful thing, you know, if you, that you can, when you can get these parties come, I don't know if we succeeded all the way through, but it feels like that the majority of fans that come are happy to see us both. You know, or all oh. three, you know, and that yeah. and that's a, that's a great achievement. And I think I think I think we managed to do that because because of the spirit that we were able to 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 honestly create between uh, among us. It was kind of trans. It was kind of jumping over to the audience and they and they accepted this new band to a certain extent. Yeah, that's, at least that's the impression that I have, you know. Yeah. And, and it helps that the new album is so great as well. I mean, if you guys didn't do a great album, that would, you know, yeah. completely sabotage everything. But yeah. And it's Pretty funny. Cool. Yeah. It's funny. You, you, you yourself, you, you just make a record. You, know, you just you just write the song and you don't know if it's good or not. You yeah. know, you just you basically like some. I mean, I have particular songs that I really like, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. You just never know how how the audience uh, would accept this. We were all very very happy that it was like globally uh, uh, fully accepted. We were number one in various countries over here in Europe. We're number one for the first time in in Germany. You yeah. know, yeah, that was. I mean, that was, and it was especially wonderful during the pandemic because the, the pandemic was such a depressing situation Time. you really yeah. had to fight these negative some people went crazy did you notice that yeah of course some people, yeah some, all around some people yeah. really yeah. lost it they couldn't yeah. deal yeah. with the they couldn't deal with the with the fear so they needed people to blame so yeah. they got into this extreme kind of ideas it's very very sad and very scary i've seen that happening all over the place you know yeah um, so it, it drains a lot of energy you know, yeah. Because you have to focus, you have to get your heart straight, you have to work on not getting sucked in into this extreme sort of ideas that people have. I think I did pretty good, but I have I have friends, you know, in my who didn't do very good, and they, yeah, they're just they're just in the phase of getting back on track, hopefully. But it's like it was such a beautiful thing, right in the middle of of this frustration and this negative pushing you down spirit that was uh, for months there for years actually then you release an album and suddenly you talk about something else you don't talk about corona you, you yeah. talk about music you talk about and that was so uplifting yeah it was so uplifting we did like tons of interviews and you felt like good again you know i mean yeah. it was a great idea of the band to decide to release it in 21 and not yeah. wait until everything is over we knew we wouldn't be able to tour with the album right away but we wanted to do it it was it was the right thing to do because it was such an uplifting experience and then uh, right after that we did a video which was fun and there was still a bit of time that we had to wait but in 2022 we were able to play again so it was yeah. it was a good timing yeah, and excellent. And I can't wait to see you here in Toronto on May 23rd. I'm looking forward to it very much. Yeah, right. it's going to be a heavy tour because we do a lot of the things with a nightliner and I can't yeah. sleep in the nightliner. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to I'm trying to fly wherever it makes sense, take a mm -hmm. plane or whatever. It's going to be tough. 
but it's like uh, the audience is always worth it. I'm not I'm not saying that to kiss anyone's butts. I honestly think the co good concerts are mainly done by the audience. It really is. All we do is we show up. Hopefully, we learn our songs, and then we play them. That's all we yeah. do. <laughs> But the yeah. the reaction of the audience that makes it special. When they when that when that love comes, when that positive energy comes, that jumps onto the musician, and then we get even better. You know, we can play yeah. in a way or perform in a way. It's it's a given. It's a given gift. Mm -hmm. And this is so yeah. true, especially with this type of music. You know, yeah. it's always yeah. the audience that makes the concert. We're just there playing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for the interview, my friend. And uh, I will see you in May here in Toronto, right? I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good rest of the day, okay? You too. Cheers. Bye. Bye.